Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about nautical and coastal DIYs that are so easy, absolutely anyone can make them, no skill required. I'm excited to see which one is your favorite. This is part of a collaboration playlist. I'll tell you more about that as we get into the video. But if you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you like any of the projects you see in today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's make some DIYs. I have this tag from Easter from Dollar Tree, and I really like the shape of this sign. I'm always looking for different shapes at Dollar Tree of signs to use. So I like to cover up the portion that I don't need with all the glitter and everything like that, because it's easier to cover it up to me than it is to sand it and try and peel it all off and everything. So on the back side, I'm just using some hot glue and some craft paper to cover up all of that. Now that is a beautiful design that is on the back. You could easily leave it as that, make it a two-sided sign, that's fine too. A lot of times I get people requesting like, what if I was to resell this or something and they want to cover it up and find an easy way this is definitely easy i just cut around the edges of that craft paper and then in a slow downward motion with my sander i just sand off all of the edges and it gives it a very crisp clean edge if you notice any of the paper coming up, you just put a little bit more glue down and voila, it's fixed. So now I'm gonna find some scrapbook paper that kind of reminds me of like oceany. I wanna kind of go with a navy blue color. And so I am just using this right here. This came from a pack I got at Hobby Lobby, but any paper would work that you would like to use. I just really like the deep blue. To me, these look like little ocean bubbles or something on here. So I'm just using my purple glue stick. You guys know that I'm a big fan of this glue. Honestly, it has to be this particular kind of glue. This is the one I've had the most success with. So just know that if you're new here, it's the Elmer's Purple School Glue Stick. I love it. It seems to hold very well and I don't get any bubbles or anything like I do with Mod Podge. After trimming off the excess paper, I just sand in a downward motion to break that paper off, kind of get it off there. It gives it a nice crisp look. It looks like that paper was cut to go on the tag. So now I just used a pencil and I poked through the little hole there. And I have these starfish and uh, sand dollars that I got at Dollar Tree. They just come in a three pack. And so I'm using two of the starfish and I apologize that the bottom of the sign is cut off right here. Uh, hopefully they fix that here in just a second for you. But I put the sand dollar in the middle and I kind of glued the sand dollar uh, it has two different sides and I glued it with kind of what would be like the bottom portion up because I felt like it had a little bit more detail and I liked that it was raised off the sign a little bit more like that. I'm just using hot glue, but you could easily use some kind of super glue or Gorilla Glue or something like that if you would like. Now I got this nautical rope at Dollar Tree that has this cute two-tone to it. So this is what I'm using for the rope hang tag on the top. I love this design because you can customize it to any season, any time. I mean, you can use any color of scrapbook paper, any type of embellishment, rope, anything on the top. Now I spray the little rope down. I do this all the time with rope and twine because it relaxes it to help it kind of get a more straight look. So just a little tip there, if you work with twine or rope and it always kind of curls a different way on you, spritz it with a little bit of water. Now on the side of this, I had an idea. They have some little jute twine that is also this two-tone and I thought it would be cute to make an edge to the sign. I've never done this before so I wasn't sure how it would turn out but guys I actually really like it it gives a very finished look to this so I just run a little glue onto the edge of the sign as you can see here and then I am just slowly taking that twine and I am pressing it into the glue and I'll let it sit for maybe 30 seconds before I move on to like the next side of the sign and I'm just keep pressing it and making sure that it is straight and I just thought it was kind of a fun little, I loved this twine and I wanted to incorporate it somehow. And I thought this just ended up being really cute. When I get to the edge of the sign here, I realized where I had glued this little piece of rope earlier to cover my seam in the paper. I realized I needed to take it up. So if you do this, maybe wait to put that rope over the seam of the paper till the very end. But I just go over each of these curves and I just use my fingers to kind of bend that twine into place where those little bumps are there to get that little curve in the corner, or not curve in the corner, but the actual like bend in the corner, if that makes sense. And then when I get to the end, I just cut it off and glue it together and I put this little piece of rope that I have covering my seam I just glue it back into place and that is it for this tag it turns out so cute if you can cut some paper and use a glue gun you've got this one figured out but I think it looks so cute either hanging or you can prop it up like this I love this and it is totally coastal and nautical Today's video is part of a playlist down in my description box and pinned in my comments will be a link for you to click. That will take you right over to the playlist and it will play through a bunch of videos that have a theme of nautical, coastal, beach themed DIYs. 
I have the honor each month of hosting this with my friend Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun, Missy from The Crafty Cove, and our guest host this month is Lisa from Our Gray House. I will have a link to each of these hosts down in my description box. If you do click on that playlist link, you'll be directed to all of their channels as their videos are all part of this playlist. While you're there, say hello, subscribe to their channels if you would like. They make amazing DIYs. You're going to love each and every one of them, and you are going to find so much inspiration on this playlist. All right, let's make some more DIYs. I'm going to use a Dollar Tree cutting board and this little cute floral steak to make this project. So you can see how easy it is to take this little steak portion off of this little sign. I want to weather the cutting board a little bit. You could just place it down like that and it would be completely fine and make this project much easier. But I wanted a little bit like this sign had been left out, it had been weathered, looked like beech wood or something like that. So using a chip brush and a little bit of just white chalk paint, I'll dip my brush in the white chalk paint and then I lightly brush it over the surface of this cutting board. I do go around the sides, I don't worry about the back because it's going to be a sign hanging on a wall or something so you're not going to see that so that's up to you whether you do that or not and I just get the keep going until I get the desired weathered look you could easily paint this any color use any piece of scrap wood that you had I mean make this as easy as possible to give this a little bit more of a three-dimensional look and kind of make it pop a little bit against that sign, I do just go around the edges with a little bit of the white paint on that chip brush, just lightly going over the edges. This would be completely optional and all of this painting portion actually would be completely optional for you. Now to get the sign onto our cutting board, I want it to pop with a 3D effect. So I'm using some Jenga blocks on the back. I first place these two down and then I place it onto my sign and realize it's kind of drooping on the one side. So I just take one more Jenga block and glue it on. So those Jenga blocks are glued onto the back of my tin piece and so all I have to do is just put glue right onto those blocks and then place it down on my cutting board. I love the little red, white, and blue vibe that this has. It really has that Americana, summertime, 4th of July feel to it. I just love those colors, very coastal to me. So I take some of this rope from the coastal section at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to use my staple gun and staple a cute little hanger onto the back so that way this sign can be a cute little hanging sign. So you can see how cute it looks here hanging. I love how this turns out. It's darling, you guys, I, I do, I just love this one. And you can see even if you just placed it up, it looks like you've got just a little bit of nautical rope on the top of it. If you can use a glue gun, you can totally do this project. It's so easy. So I have this charger plate. Now I got this at Hobby Lobby because I like the designs on theirs a little bit more. And I have a hard time finding just the plain white ones at my Dollar Tree. So if you can find them at Dollar Tree, you can definitely use that. But I am just going to take this little shell. This was hanging with a little twine um, piece that I cut off of the top. And I'm just going to glue some of these cubes onto the back of it. I just buy these cubes in the craft section at Dollar Tree. You could easily use some Gorilla Glue to give a better hold if you would like to. Sometimes on these chargers I like to do a little bit of hot glue because you can kind of peel them off and change the embellishment for the different seasons. So I just place the hot glue on each of those little cubes there and then I just center this up. When I first place it down I realized that my charger wasn't quite straight and so you have a little bit of wiggle room there but that is it. You have this like on a shelf or in a china hutch or something and it totally gives you that coastal beachy vibe. Such a cute decoration and it's so simple and literally it took me less than two minutes to make this. So fun. I found these stickers at Dollar Tree and I think they are so cute and they have a little three-dimensional look to them. And I have this little frame that I got out of the wedding section at Hobby Lobby. The wedding section, guys, is the most underrated section at your craft store, I swear. I find the best deals there. And I think most people think like, oh, I don't have a wedding. I don't need to shop there. You can find some really good things. So I'm just showing you that instead of sanding that, I could have just placed one of the Dollar Tree cutting boards in the back there. Or you can do this directly onto a Dollar Tree cutting board or any frame. And if you want that wood look, use one of those cutting boards or just a plain frame. However you want to do this, it's going to work, you guys. It's so simple. So my frame was pretty beat up. So I'm just taking some... Uh, white paint and I'm just going over and just giving it a really good coat. I like this frame because it has a very good texture to it and I'm going to do a little bit of aging to it once I get these stickers on here. So I'm taking this darling little whale and then there's these three little pieces on the bottom here that have the seahorse, the sand dollar, and the little sea turtle. I place them out first to make sure I like them and then I'm going to add some glue just to make sure it gives them a little bit of extra stick so they're not going to be peeling off or anything like that. 
And then centering in that middle sand dollar there, I place that in the center there, and then I go onto the other sides here and place those other two. And it's just a little bit of hot glue. You could even add some super glue or something. The stickiness on these is really good. That might even just work. But I just wanted to make sure they weren't going to be peeling off because I really wanted this to last. And then I just make sure that they're evened up. I eyeball a lot of things, so if measuring is your jam, you can totally do that. Now on to distressing this frame. I'm taking some antiquing wax. You can use whatever brand, whatever kind you like. And I am just going to use a any type of brush really, but I'm using just one of the stencil chip brushes from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to do this in sections. So I'll put it all over this whole side of this frame right here. And then you'll see what I'm going to do. I know distressing is not everybody's favorite thing, so this is completely optional. I'm just showing you if you happen to have like a three-dimensional frame or just this technique for something you might like to do it on but i'm just using a baby wipe right here and i'm just going to wipe the top sections of this off and so you're going to see it's going to leave quite a bit of that antiquing wax down in the little crevices and that's what i'm looking for so you don't want to wipe too too much off or press too hard because you don't want it to come out of those little grooves there and we can go back and brighten up the top portion with a little bit more paint after I have that section to my desired liking, I just move on to the next section and I just work in sections so the whole thing, it doesn't start to dry or anything like that. And you just the same process, you put that wax on there and then you'll just lightly wipe off over the top and over all those raised areas, it cleans off and then it leaves all that wax down in the little crevices there. Once I have all of my antiquing wax on, I just lightly get a brush with a little bit more of that white paint on it and just lightly go over the top. It's just going to brighten up all of those raised areas. Uh, this also would be optional if you like the way the other uh, way I had before it almost looks like that pressed tin or something. But I did want to brighten it up a little bit so it didn't look, you can kind of see up close how it ends up looking. But I like how that looks to brighten it up a little bit there. And that's all there is to this. It is really simple. It's just using some stickers and a frame, or you could even, like I said earlier, or just do it on a Dollar Tree cutting board. I think it looks super cute. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Don't forget that I'm on Instagram also. I love to meet new Insta friends, so I would love for you to come over and say hi, check out my page, and see all the latest projects that I'm working on. I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. This is just one of the little Glade candle jars that I had left over that I would hang on to. And so I have kind of a few of these and I love coming up with different projects for them. But I wanna have like a little coastal plant. So I thought it would be kind of fun to do some rope around this. So I'm just taking some of the Dollar Tree rope and just using some hot glue. I just kind of do a little line of it, like a little bead of glue. And then I will take, and I like to use these little finger protectors and I do just get these at Dollar Tree. You can also get some like on Amazon or any craft store. But you can see I just do the bead of hot glue and then I will gently press that rope into the glue and let it dry before I move on to the next section. I have been asked a few times about the type of hot glue that I use on glass to get it to stay. And I either use the Gorilla brand or I use the Sherbonder brand and I've never had a problem with those with it coming off of the glass. So just be aware of that. I decided to do four rows of just the regular rope there, that traditional rope color. And you can see I just cut it off there and pick a place that's going to be the back of your little planter here so that way you can kind of keep all of your edges to that. It will still look nice, but if, it, if you kind of pick one section where all of the, your rope ends, then you can kind of hide that away if you will. Uh, and so you don't have to have it like showing raw edges anywhere. So I'm just taking some of this two-toned rope from the nautical section at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to do a couple rows of this and then I will continue on with the traditional rope. I thought this would just kind of be a cute little way to break up that rope, add a little bit of that blue coastal vibe into this. I really think that this two-tone rope sets it off. And this really is so simple. It's just a matter of gluing a little bead of glue and pressing some rope into it. I feel that this is a very good, easy, simple project and it ends up being so cute in the end. And after I get maybe like three rows or so of that, two-tone rope I just like I said continue on with this traditional rope when I get to the top I just do one last little ring around it uh, to make sure it goes up over the edge of that glass container so that way you can't see the glass at all and then you can kind of watch how I finish this off here I just kind of twist those edges around so they're nice and taut 
and then I just kind of place that down. You can see here, I'll just do the glue and then I will just hold that down and kind of tuck that little end really tightly down over the edge there to kind of make sure that it's all all done there and then i just take some various florals that i have some little broken off pieces from some and stick all in there now i have this from dollar tree and i just take it and give it a good coat of spray paint and i wanted to give it a white spray paint to kind of keep with that clean coastal vibe and then this is so easy i'm just going to wrap this rope around maybe three times here i just put a little bit of the hot glue on one portion of it and then i just spin this around and then to glue it on i cut that off you can see here i'm going to kind of bring that over the edge so it kind of looks like a little knot there and even though i intended for this to be the back i ended up liking that the most and made it the front of mine and then i had this onion grass from dollar tree and to me it kind of looked like sea glass uh, not sea glass but sea grass that grows like if you've been to like the Co Oregon coast or anywhere in there I'm sure that on other coasts they have the same type of grass that grows everywhere that's the big tall and it just kind of sways so nicely in the wind that was the vibe that I was going for with this but here's a look at them together. I think they really set each other off nicely. I really love how these both turned out. I feel like they do have a very good beachy coastal vibe and they're gonna look so cute with everything put together. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching today. It was so much fun creating each one of these DIYs. This was such a fun theme. And once I got going, I had so much inspiration and I really just wanted to create something that was so easy that you guys could just take off and do it really quickly and create some really cute DIYs with not really having a lot of time or a lot of skill or anything like that, that anybody can take these and make them. I loved the coastal feel that they have. Um, so now for the real question. Are you more of a coast person or more of a beach person? Let me know down in the comments, coast or beach. I feel like these DIYs could go for either one, but definitely let me know your favorite down in the comments. Remember that that playlist is going to be in my description box, so click that so you can see all of the other nautical beach and coast themed DIYs and visit the other host channels. Show them some love and support. And you guys, as always, remember to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.